How do you get good at packing for street photography? The answer is you pack all the wrong shit for many, many miles and at the request of your aging back and knees, you finally decide to do something about it. I went through these phases as a photographer, right? Where first I was trying to cram everything into a big backpack that can work as a carry-on. And it only took a couple of layovers for me to realize that this is not good for my back. And then I swung in the far complete opposite direction where I would shove everything into checked luggage and take almost nothing with me, you know, through security and gate checks and boarding and all of this kind of stuff. But then you have this idea of like, well, what if I don't want to check luggage in? What if I have a long layover? I want to step out of the airport. And what about the looming anxiety of my luggage not arriving at the same time or place as me? Like a modern day Goldilocks with, let's face it, much better hair, I need to find this right balance. I need to find a solution that was efficient and easy to travel with and didn't require check luggage for shorter adventures. And that's what led me to this. After going down the rabbit hole with reviews and talking to a ton of heavy travelers, the key piece for my travel solution is the Monos Carry-On Pro Plus. This is a light, durable carry-on solution that is made to last and backed by a really extensive guarantee from the company, but is adaptable. It has all the key features to, to make this thing really useful for traveling creatives. I'll use one side of this luggage for about a week's worth of clothes clothing and hygiene and the key necessities there. The other half, this is where the magic happens. You see this side over here, it perfectly encapsulates these peak design packing cubes, the medium and small. There's three things that make these packing cubes really great, right? Where you can customize this to the layout for your equipment. The dividers themselves are really firm and hold their position and you can access your equipment very quickly. If you find yourself in a situation where security wants you to take your camera equipment out of your bag, you can take these cubes out, flip the lid over and have it pass through that way. And I found that this works in even the wildest airports where it just seems more efficient than taking every single piece of equipment and putting it into a bin. The medium cube here has plenty of space for me to pack three cameras, four lenses, and a ton of other accessories like storage, cards, power, cables, and, and film. The smaller cube I'll use for lighting and any additional accessories. I can pack in a Profoto A2 or A10, put in the necessary components for that, and add in some other bits and bobs that might come in handy for the trip that I'm going on. Whether it's cleaning solution, microfiber cloths, a blower of some kind, anything else that kind of fleshes out the kit that I'm gonna need. Whether it's something more high-end like a Pro Photo or something simple like the Fuji EF X20, I'll always make sure to pack some kind of light and there will be some space left over here where I can put in travel chargers and adapters as needed. Now there's one more key component here and that is this ugly photography vest. This is something that I learned from my friend Chuck, AKA Project Roman. And this, well, this comes in handy when you run into an airport where the rate restrictions are really tough or they might want you to empty a few things. Well, I will excuse myself. I will throw on this vest and I can throw in multiple cameras, lenses, really the heaviest stuff, take it out of this packing cube, put it on me, reapproach the desk and you should be good to go. I've only had to do this once and to even do it at all is weird, but listen, better to be prepared than not. Along with the carry-on, most flights will allow you to have a personal item, something small that can fit under the seat in front of you. So for this reason, I'll take a small backpack like this one here. You've probably seen this before. I've been using it for years. I love it because it doesn't look like a massive camera bag. It's just a very small, nondescript, easy to use bag that's comfortable as well. This backpack I wanna keep relatively empty because say I hit a weird airport that is demanding I check in my carry-on, I can move some of the expensive equipment into this backpack and have the peace of mind where this thing is gonna be right under my feet. This backpack, it's from Ona, and again, I keep it very light. I might throw in an iPad, but the laptop, that's going in the carry-on, and you know there might be a headphone or phone charger, some small items in here. It has the packing cubes that come with it. It just comes in handy if I need to offload some equipment from my carry-on. 
I love this thing because it helps me just keep a low profile in the airport and in the streets. And on that note, now that we've talked about how I pack for the flight, how I pack to, to get to my destination, let's talk about what I pack when I actually go out on a street photography walk. For shorter walks, you know, around three hours or less, I don't want a bag with me or anything really to weigh me down. So I'm only gonna take two camera bodies and two camera lenses. The main body is gonna have a wide perspective. If I have the light on my side, I will opt for my 28 millimeter Sumacron where I know I have plenty of available light in front of me. If the lighting is looking unfavorable or unpredictable or maybe the sun's about to set, I will use the 35 Sumalux with a wider aperture as the main camera lens. This main camera, it's the Leica M11, the one right behind me, and this is what's glued to my wrist. It's hanging off the strap, and this is the one that I'm using to take most of the images, right? This is the thing that is the, the main driver. Now, if you wanna know about the accessories that I have outfitted for my Leica M11, I covered all of that in my long-term review. But let's talk about the second camera body that I take with me. It's the Leica SL2S. Here, I'll have a tighter focal length. Maybe it's the Sumalux 35 if I'm using the Sumacron on my main body or the 50 millimeter Apple. And you're probably wondering, like having a second body, doesn't this weigh you down a bit more? Doesn't this make you stick out in, uh, in a crowded environment? Doesn't this make you more of a target? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. But the opportunity to capture uh, a portrait, right? Where you can actually stage the scene a little bit or to get an environmental video, these are things that I do not want to pass up. I want to be able to be there and as quickly as possible, you know, without having to swap lenses and change a whole bunch of settings that I can just go and execute and, and build out my work. This is just the reality of the space that we occupy, right? So again, I'll use the 35 or 50 on this and in most situations where I'm not out for more than three hours, I have this for those chance encounters where I can get something a little bit more intimate or a piece of video. In some instances, I'll swap out my Leica SL2S for my Leica M6 and capture some work on film. I wouldn't call myself a film photographer. I'm just a photographer that happens to shoot film on some occasions. It really comes back to what the environment, what the light, what the, what the space is going to look like. And I'll use film as a medium where it can add to the story, not something that I'm gonna be using all the time for all of my work. Now, along with these two cameras, I'll pack some essentials, you know, my phone, some local currency, a battery charger of some kind, a cleaning cloth, and maybe AirPods in case I need to use a transparency mode. These are just some of the essentials, but what if, what if I'm gonna be staying out for longer than three hours? If I'm gonna be out for a long period of time, if I'm gonna be out for most of the day, I will take a backpack with me that will have my second camera in there. In this case, the Leica SL2S with the 24 to 90 lens will be in my backpack and I'll use it when I need it. I'll also take some water with me, extra batteries, cleaning solution, and a lighting solution of some kind. While heavier, the uncertainty and excitement of what a new day in a new place can bring, that just demands a little bit more preparation because you never know. You never know what's gonna happen, who you're gonna meet, what you're going to experience. And so that's why I've just become accustomed to, to packing like this for these longer adventures so that I'm ready for whatever is about to unfold in front of me. And this, this leads into probably the most important takeaway for this video. I started this video on this conversation of trying to find the perfect solution, but the reality is we're not gonna ever have that perfect solution. So what I think is the best approach is to limit ourselves into a position of opportunity taking only the essential items, the gear that we absolutely need and trimming the fat over time, over experiences, so that we have what we absolutely need to tell our story. The pandemic wasn't the first time we saw a major shift in air travel, okay? 9-11, after that, air travel changed for everybody. And look, there's gonna be a good chance that air travel changes again. Here's the thing, 
airlines are also these rent-seeking capitalist titans of industry, right? They're not looking necessarily for your best interests as much as they are for their shareholders. So they're not going to magically change everything to make it a much more enjoyable experience than it is now. The odds are that it might actually get progressively worse. So with that in mind, instead of trying to wait for these conditions to magically become perfect, all we can do is control what we can actually control and work with the best with what we have. And well, this system right here, well, it seems to be the best for me right now. Look at you, you made it to the end of the video and most people, they don't make it this far. So first of all, thank you. Let me say that, look, the YouTube channel, there is a bit of this uh, delayed hiatus that I was on. I just have an asynchronous schedule to this channel. If you want regular content, join my photo club because every two weeks I will share a photography story from my adventures all over the world. This channel, look, I'm not stopping anytime soon and I'm still planning to do 20, 20 videos a year. It's just gonna have a bit of an odd schedule to it. So fear not, you'll still see some great content here. But again, join the photo club because that's where every two weeks I share a brand new story. Anyway, that's enough selling and shilling or whatever you want to call it for one video. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. As always, my name is Gadgen. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.